baseball and whatever with your host justin mcawee because i was on campus and i had to appear like i was one of the cool kids i would put the star wars book inside one of my textbooks so it looked like i was just studying for class <laughs> all right look there's only one return okay and it ain't of the king it's of the jedi vincent francis jankowitz of ford i'm a glorified fact checker Last I checked, the most runs in a game wins. Actually, I am a fact checker. And Greg Probst! If you look at most Bond fans' movie rankings, they have Casino Royale and Majesties in their top two. For me, these actually rank in the bottom part of my list. I mean, I love them, but they don't compare to Diamond Club Forever. No, so no, stop getting Bond wrong! What's up, everybody? Baseball and whatever, episode 86. I'm Justin. There's Vinny. Hello again. We are having... Go- bleh, I oh, man, this is a great intro, Vinny. We're starting off with a bang here. We are going to have plenty to talk about today. We have a lot of White Sox news. Most of it not good. Uh, there was one good thing that the White Sox did today. We'll have plenty of NFL predictions for the playoffs. I just want to remind Vinny that I am a perfect 10-0 and 0 in playoff predictions this week yes you are you i i am unfortunately unfortunately uh and then Vinny picks the whatever for this week we are gonna rank our top movies of 2007 Vinny before the show told us that or told me i should say that he pulled he pulled the year randomly and it's a good thing he did because there were plenty of good movies in 2007 I was a little worried. Like I don't go to the movie as often as I use the mo- the movie. I don't go to the movie theater as often awesome as. Holy cow! I'm a little worried. I think I might have like some dementia going on or something here, Vinny. I can't talk very well anymore. Well, you're a parent now, so the <laughs> yeah, lack of sleep, true. Uh, that that's factors true. into it. That might that might be why. But um, there's a lot of great movies from 2007. I was a sophomore or junior in college. Do you remember how old you were in 2007, Vinny? I was a senior in high school. Senior in high school. 007 was the year I graduated. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, there's a lot of good stuff there, a lot of good memories. So we'll talk about that. I pulled some trivia from some of my movies as well from IMDb. Uh, But if you are tuning into the show for the first time, thank you so much. You can find us in a variety of ways. Download us on your favorite podcast app of choice, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google, Anchor, Spreaker, Megaphone, iHeartRadio. Amazon Music. Uh, you can find us by searching baseball, whatever. If you're on Apple or Spotify, give us a five star review. We'd greatly appreciate it. I think we have 25 star reviews now, which is pretty nice for us. You can email the show, baseball, whatever, gmail.com. You can tweet us at baseball and what. That's the best way to get a hold of us. You can follow us on Instagram at baseball and whatever. You can find us on youtube.com slash baseball and whatever, twitch.tv slash baseball and whatever. And the text line, 1913-808-3278. That number again is 1913-808-FART. <laughs> and starting this week, you can follow us on TikTok at Baseball and Whatever. Holy crap that I feel like an old person trying to figure out how the hell TikTok works this week, Vinny. <laughs> it was it was really depressing. Like, I found one, I made one, and then they... <laughs> They muted us because they said our music was copyrighted, but it's not. It's free from YouTube's library. It's it's royalty free. And then I had to make one on my own on my phone. And uh, I literally felt like the old man yelling at clouds. Like, why won't the stamp piece of technology work? So if you want to follow us on Insta- on, tech- on TikTok, I don't know what the hell we'll be doing on there, but you can check it out. We'll, we'll figure something out. Uh, but it's episode 86. We're going to start with 86s in Chicago sports. Uh, Vinny, the only one I can think of is on the White Sox currently, and that is center fielder Luis Robert. He's not 86? No, is that Eloy? This, is, Eloy is Eloy 86? He's 88. Oh, God. No one's Who's 86 a- on the White Sox. <laughs> there's, no 80, there's no 86 for the White Sox, Cubs, or Bulls. Oh, good man. I'm losing my mind. Holy shit. All right. Let's try this again. Vinny, who wore 86 in Chicago? <laughs> how about how about we start with your bread and butter, the Blackhawks? You should be able oh, to get oh. one of them. Yes, that would be. Uh, he is currently a Carolina Hurricane. That is Tavo Teravainen. 
Yes, All right, good. Is. I'll say, don't good leave job. me hanging. I was really worried if I couldn't get that one right. <laughs> is there another one on the no, Hawks? He, he, there is one more on the Hawks. And okay. it, do you have a guess? Currently what? wearing it? Currently? Um, 86 on the Hawks. It's got to be somebody that is a call up because I have no idea. Who is it? It is a right winger. Shoots uh, left. Nah, it doesn't help. Who Who is it? Mike Hardman. Oh, he sucks. He's, yeah, he's a defenseman. I think he's a defenseman. <laughs> he hasn't played mostly this season, I don't think. I remember thinking he was going to be something a couple years ago, and that still hasn't happened. So, yeah. All right. I didn't even know he was still on the team, to be honest. <laughs> All right. Then uh, we got the Bears next. Do you got anybody 86 uh, award? Oh, God. Did David Terrell wear 86? David Terrell did not wear 86. No, I, got, I want to say I got, he wore 83. Oh, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. I think he did. Okay, I got nobody. But th- there's some there's some notable ones. Um, Dante Pettis wore it this past year. Um, before that, notable uh, Zach Miller wore it. Yes, yes, Zach Tight Miller. End. All right, yep. Had the blowout of his had leg, a horrific right? knee injury. Yes, it was awful. Um, before that, uh, Marty Booker wore it. He's probably oh, yeah. Marty the, the most was... notable bear out of everybody. Yeah, I'd say probably one of the better wide receivers too, right? Yes, he was one of my favorites. Um, before him, not much. Um, Cap Boso in no. eighty-seven to ninety-one. Um, no, sir. Bob Parsons, nineteen seventy-two to nineteen eighty-three. Um, <laughs> loved Phillips lo- or Lloyd Phillips. Sorry, the oh. Y is cut off there. It looks like L O V D Phillips. Uh, and yeah, mm-hmm. I, so it said mm-hmm. loved. Uh, but it's okay. Lloyd Phillips and All right. Pete Manning. Uh, the uh mm. the Godfather to uh, Peyton Manning. Really. I'm just kidding. No, oh, it's not. okay. I was gonna say that'd be that'd be pretty cool if it was. I don't know. Would have been, but yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Not quite. But All that, right, that's it enough. for Chicago sports eighty sixes. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, let's see what's next. We do have we had uh, quite a few comments, uh, both from Facebook and uh, uh, write-ins. Would you like to read these, or would you like me to take these? Um, Your I'll read them. That's fine. Okay, take um, it away. On Facebook, what's that? I said, take it away. All right. On Facebook, in regards to the 49ers QB, Brock Purdy, Cat, is it Cat or Kate? Cat. You know this person? Yes, it's my aunt. Okay. Yeah, they live in San Jose, Cat I says, believe now. Cat. What's that? I believe they live in San Jose, actually, now. I think they moved. They used to be okay. in San- Santa Cruz, I think. Anyway, okay. I digress. Um, Go ahead. Cat says Kyle Shanahan's system is outstanding but that doesn't mean that Purdy isn't legit time will tell yes time will tell Um, I'm by no means an expert so um, I know we were talking about Brock Purdy and the 49ers and I know I don't you know I don't think that he's anything special I mean he's Mr. Irrelevant for for Pete's sake I think he's Um, gonna have an uphill battle for sure this week yeah, I, I, you know, he he might have a good career in the NFL, but I don't think he's he's not the next Tom Brady. I don't think he's going to be. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, I've been proven wrong plenty of times before. My wife can attest to that. No. Um, so yeah, we'll see on Brock Purdy. But you know, good good for him for the success that he's having because that'll. The success he's having right now means he'll probably have a long career in the NFL, at least as a backup uh, at the very least. So Yeah, good for him. Moving on, uh, on Facebook in regards to Justin being a major Star Wars nerd. Uh, nerd alert! Karen says, own it, Justin. And Melissa says, is this new information? Some of us already knew this about you. Yeah, Justin, I think this may be the uh, first step to recovery is acceptance, right? Acceptance, Isn't that it? yeah. Oh, I, I have no yeah. problem accepting. I mean, I'm all in on Star Wars. So now, uh, like in our intro where I would hide it in college because I was still trying to, you know, find 
a future wife and and then I found your sister not on campus maybe that's why I found her not on campus uh, probably but now like she's stuck with me for the foreseeable future so I can nerd do my Star Wars thing and nerd out she still will not watch any of them with me ever well, that's unfortunate I made the mistake the first one I showed her was the force awakens because I thought maybe it was new she'd like it because it was more you know CG and little better graphics in terms of the you know computer stuff and she's like yeah it was fine it was okay but i'm like in retrospect the movie sucks too it's not that good so none of the new ones are good except rogue one and solo so maybe rogue one she would like because it's so it ends on a downer and you know your sister she likes a, the dark the dark stuff. stuff yeah yeah so maybe that's the She'd way to go like that like, I would love to show her a new hope, but I know she would tap out after, like, 20 minutes because that one really takes a long time to get going. So, um, yeah. She, yeah 20 so I, minutes. She'd, be, she'd probably be done by the end of the scroll. <laughs> That's probably true. So, yeah. So, she – yeah, I'm still hoping – We I think we might have talked about this before. We had made a deal that if I watched Goonies, My Girl, and Scream – she would watch three Star Wars movies, which I held up my side of the bargain. I watched Goonies and Scream. I didn't want watch My Girl because that just sounds dumb, but she's only watched one Star Wars movie with me. So, <laughs> Okay, um, hold on. Oh, I think, boy. Oh, Justin, just man yes. up and watch My Girl. It's not that bad. Dan Aykroyd's in it. We all know that, that you, that's your voice doppelganger. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, just man up and watch it all right it's not that bad of a movie it's a good he movie. needs he needs his glasses he can't see like i i got the gist of it already but all right maybe i will um yeah so there you go i will i will um, own up to it there you go good good uh Thank pretzel you. vince writes in um uh, let's see here on 85s Willie Holman was a journeyman defensive lineman he was okay but you left out of the mix Keith Jennings he was a serviceable tight end for the Bears he could block he did okay catching the ball but his main job was to block another 85 left off the list was Steve Schubert he was a backup receiver and return punts all those guys sound like guys that should have been left off the list because they all sound like they were just bleh. Yeah, I, I there was saw no that to mention them. when he emailed that in, and I was like, I had never heard of any of those guys. None. Yeah, and I like that. He was a journey, journeyman defensive man. Why would I mention a journeyman? <laughs> I, he wasn't around during my time. I don't remember him. He was a journeyman. And then a, uh, a tight end who could block. Ooh, okay. That guy wasn't that good of a tight end then. And then a, a backup receiver and return punts. That's going to be like Dante Pettis when my kids are older. They're not going to remember who Dante Pettis was for the Bears. It's exactly who Dante Pettis was. <laughs> or is, I guess. Is Backup receiver currently, return yeah. punts. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, you might be right. I don't know. I, I feel like, I don't know what, Equinamius St. Brown might be another one nobody remembers. Yeah. Although yeah, he got probably. an extension. Yeah, he did. But, well, they, they do need players on the field at this point. Um, yes, they do. Yes. So, well, there you go. There's there's a few more um, football players that we missed out on, you know, 85. All right. Uh, should we get to the baseball? Sure. All right. Sounds like baseball. Oh, boy, Welcome back to Major League Baseball. Sort of. Taking a look at Chicago's two favorite teams and other happenings around the MLB. Real quick, Vinny, your dad in the chat says, boy, oh boy, try to pass along a little history. Hey, everybody, an old man's talking. I, I do appreciate him trying, um, but yeah, I guess, I don't know. I you know, I feel like that would be me referencing like super obscure bench players for the Cubs or guys on the Hawks fourth line from like 25 years ago that nobody else remembers but me. So I, I can definitely, yep. I can see where he's coming from. You know, but um, all right. You want to start off? I think. Did you add this to the doc, or did I? Nick Madrigal maybe going back to the White Sox. Yeah, that was uh, broke. Uh, well, not broke, but Bob Nightingale had um, sent out or tweeted or wrote uh, a message or an article about um, Nick Madrigal potentially making his way back to the Sox through trade with the whites, you know, the Cubs and the white Sox making trade and sending him back to the Sox because they need a second baseman. It's Bob Nightingale. 
uh, how true that is, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, he has been right with other Sox insider information. It seems like he's got good sources there because I think he's um, holding a lot of water for Jerry to get that information. So there, where there's smoke, there could be fire on that. Um, you know, we'll have to see. It, it makes sense because they need a second baseman. I know a lot of Sox fans don't want him back. Um I'm okay with the Cubs keeping him as a bench bat. I don't know what the return would be for Nick Madrigal. Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't think he's got a lot of trade value uh, to his no. name in order to get no. something interesting back. I, I saw somebody had tweeted out, uh, I think it was, it might've been Cody uh, Del from Mendo CHGO. from CHGO had yep. some, I think he said, uh, is Nick Madrigal for Yohan Mankata? And I was oh. just like, yes, like, I, I would do that you think because so? they have a hole at third base. You're trading a bench bat for a, yeah. a player that can that can play at third base. Um, you know, I'm fine with that. I wasn't fine with the Patrick Wisdom and Ian Happ for Yohan Mankata, but I'd trade Nick Madrigal for Yohan Mankata. I don't think the White Sox would do that, but um, I I would because it would create a hole for the, well, I, I guess unless they want to put Jake Berger at third base or. I don't know who else at third base, but I mean, that creates a hole for them if they're going to trade Moncada, I feel like, because I think they're expecting him to have a bounce back year. Uh, they are. So that, 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 that wouldn't make any sense for them to do that. No, no. I mean, I just think it's funny when Madrigal was traded to the Cubs, all the White Sox fans that I knew of, except Greg, I should say, except Greg, were all of a sudden turning on Madrigal saying, we never wanted him, he was never any good, you can have him, we don't care, you know, blah, blah, blah. When prior to that, he was like a pretty big up-and-coming prospect because they drafted him so high. Uh, and then as soon as he becomes a Cub, oh, he's no good. And now that there's a chance he could be coming back to the south side, well, because they don't have a second baseman besides, uh, uh, what's his name, Remy, not Remy, Rami? Rami no. Gonzalez. Rami Gonzalez, thank you. Uh now it's like, oh, he he's he's pretty good. We could use him. We could have, we we could do pretty well with him coming back. So I, I think that's kind of funny. Um yeah. I mean I, I like Magical. That one month he stayed healthy for the Cubs, he actually did really well. The problem is he could not stay healthy, and now his position on the field is really obsolete. He's he can't play second now because you got Nico there. You, he can't move him to short because Dansby Swanson's there. He was quoted as saying he was taking grounders at third and working on his arm, but he doesn't have the arm, at least I, from what I saw when he was healthy, doesn't have the arm to make it uh, a solid throw from third base. So, like you said, he's expendable. And as a guy that's strictly contact and not really going to offer much else, nowhere else for him to mm -hmm. really play besides giving Nico a day off occasionally, um, yeah, he's he's expendable at this point, which is a bummer because I like him and he seems like a decent guy. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yuan Mankata, I don't know. At this point, I think I'd rather have Wisdom at third than Mankata, though. I feel like Wisdom's more mm -hmm. consistent. You I don't think it. so? Really? Even no, with his bat? I, I think Mankata's got a higher, I don't know. I, I, I don't higher know. I ceiling. feel like Mankata's got a higher ceiling than Patrick Wisdom. That I would agree um, with. Yeah. So I I would take that um over over wisdom and plus yeah, I did, I just think he plays a better defense too than wisdom at third base. So Okay. Yeah, defensively I would agree with that too. Yeah, I, I mean it would it'll be interesting. I'll be curious to see the uh Jed Hoyer was quoted today either in the Athletic or was it on the score? I can't remember where he was quoted, but he said we are not done this off season yet. So maybe there's something I, cooking there. I saw that. So Yeah. I think it was I mean, in the athletic. Was it the athletic? Okay, so he was quoted as saying they're not done. So something will be, maybe is in the works as we speak. Who knows? I mean, the last time the Cubs it's have Whites... to be a trade. Oh yeah, it would have to be. There's, the last there's time no the... way that there's that there's not anybody else really relevant not... to sign except maybe a reliever. So yes, I know there's still hope that Andrew Chaffin gets picked up. You know, but we'll see. But yeah, I, I mean, the last time the Cubs and Sox traded was. The big Eloy and Quintana and um, Dylan Cease trade. So I don't know. I've uh, yeah. I, the I last time don't they know. traded Justin was for Craig Kimbrell. Oh God, that's right for Nick Madrigal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the guy we've been talking about. Dear Lord, maybe you yeah, do have dementia. I I need to go to the doctor. <laughs> I don't. Maddie is sucking my brain out of my head. Oh, good Lord. 
All right. Um, let's let's talk he- Kyle Hendricks. Vinny, before I, I talk a little bit about the article in The Athletic, what is your hope, prediction? Where do you think Hendricks comes into play? When do you think he comes back? He's still working his way back from injury. What would you like to see out of him this year? God, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, not to put you on the I, to, spot. To Sorry. be on the roster as a fifth starter at this point, I, okay. I mean, I don't know. I don't have any hope after that article. I, I'll, they'll be lucky if he's back at all this year. I don't know. It sounds yeah. pretty bad. Well, what's what's? I don't want to say deceiving because I I don't see Hendricks as a guy that's trying to pull a fast one on the fans. But like it, at the Cubs convention, one of the panels he was on was all about this. Was a starters panel, I think. Or maybe there's a couple of bullpen arms in there. I can't remember. But he had talked about how, you know, if he had his way, he'd be back for opening day. But he was targeting a between opening day in May return. But after reading this article from The Athletic, is he, I mean, is he even going to be back by the All-Star break? Like, it, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It it, it talks about how they incorporated um, a new perspective into his offseason program, which was shaped by Dr. Keith Meister, the head team physician for the Texas Rangers and an orthopedic surgeon. Um you know, they looked at his MRI. He's pitched more than 1,300 innings, and there's t- wear and tear on his arm. But what's tough is, like like we've talked about in the past, is he's not like some hard thrower. You know, he's just a normal pitcher. He He's yep. able to place his pitches where they want to go. Um, and apparently he had uh, – Said he uh, Hendricks said he was advised that the vast majority, eighty to eighty five percent of pitchers with a capsule tear in his shoulder, do not require surgery. Uh, so instead, he has been focusing on strengthening his shoulder the entire time. His training routine, warm ups, cool downs, t- tweaking his uh, delivery to try and reduce stress on his arm. I just, I, I don't know. Like, it, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it. You know, it. I was feeling pretty good about him coming back, but then after reading this article, and you kind of think about, you know, Stroman and Tyon and Steele and Smiley, and then you know, is it Alzale? Is it Thompson? I, I guess the Cubs have put themselves in a position where they can give Hendricks all the time he needs, and even then, when he comes back, yep. I feel like at this point in his career, is he a fourth or fifth starter? I don't know if he ever gets near that top of the rotation kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't, don't know think so at this point. I, no, no, it's it's you know he he remains positive in this article. They even they even mentioned Rich Hill, who has somehow you know found the the fountain of youth and is still pitching. Um, but yeah, it's it's he you know Hendricks is quoting saying, "I'm able to step back and see the bigger picture a little bit. I obviously see where I'm at in my career. It's kind of exciting in that way, though. I have this opportunity in front of me, the opportunity for me to be who I am for this team and for all these guys that come in here and work their tails off every day. But yeah, individually, it gives me the opportunity to kind of prove myself again in a way and just see where it takes me. I I don't know when you end it by saying we're just going to see where it takes you, which is fine. He, he mm-hmm. he's earned it, you know, but um." When that's your stance, it's like, oh, you know, that to me, that almost sounds like somebody who could be gone for an extended period of time or or maybe I have I have no idea. I don't know what he becomes. So I'd be very curious to see how that goes. I would love to have him back. Um, mm-hmm. He's just a fun pitcher to watch. Seems like a good guy. But, yeah, I, I don't know where he will be. And thankfully, I feel like the Cubs have kind of bolstered the rotation a little bit more. So they should be in good shape with that. So we'll see what happens. Yes, they should. Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, uh, do we do we want to get into the White Sox week that they had? God, oh, sure. my might, God. we might as well. We we <laughs> might as well. We're we're oh boy. All right, let's let's talk White Sox here for a second. So, um, let's start with a positive. Uh, Jason Benetti and Steve Stone Stone have had their contracts finalized. They are being brought back. I was reading something today from Bleacher Nation, and it it almost kind of seemed like there was a little bit of hesitation on whether or not Jason Benetti was going to come back because the White Sox mm-hmm. were kind of, I don't want to say getting frustrated, but maybe there was a little bit of a tone in the article I read that said like, yeah, they didn't mind him going to do, you know, uh, uh, nationally broadcast baseball games because it allows, you know, him to get out there, kind of extends the White Sox name, the brand and things like that. But he's really diversified. I mean, he's doing college basketball yeah. and, and football and um, really getting out there. So it seemed like maybe they weren't necessarily on board with that, but apparently they were able to iron out the details. They're bringing him back. They're bringing Steve Stone back. And me, somebody who is not a White Sox fan at all, I actually enjoy turning on White Sox games just to hear that booth. So 
Um, mm-hmm. I know some people have kind of soured on Steve Stone over the years, especially even when he was still in the Cubs booth. But I still like listening to him. He he does know what he's talking about. Uh, and Jason Benetti, I, I would say at this point, is probably one of the best in in the baseball yeah. uh, broadcasting in terms of He might on be TV. one of the best broadcasters. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I mean that was that was a good thing because I really thought I'm like oh are, you know is Jerry Reinsdorf gonna cheap out on this and is this gonna end badly for them? But thankfully it seems like that got resolved. All right, so yay White Sox on that one. Um, yep. All right, let's talk Eloy before we get into the real big one. Eloy was quoted is this week. First off, and I'm paraphrasing here. I don't have the exact quotes pulled up, but I did read through them and, and re- read through. I believe it was Vinny Duber that was talking about it from CHGO CHGO on the White Sox beat. Um, first off, he was asked about, you know, this is Eloy was asked, how do you handle the leadership vacancy now that's there when, uh, Jose Abreu has left? And I would also argue he left because Jerry Reinsdorf, who promised him he'd be a White Sox forever, did not hold up that mm-hmm. end, of the, end up that deal. Um, and Eloy's response, and you can, you can call me out if I'm, if I'm mis, uh, misremembering this, but he said, I really don't know. I don't know how we fill that void. Yeah, it's pretty much that. <laughs> so, okay, a um, couple ways to look at it. First of all, I know Spanish is his first language. English is not his first language. He's he's actually a really good um, English speaker, which is awesome. Spanish is his first language. I know on the Zoom call there was no translator, so maybe maybe there's a little bit of lost in translation there. Maybe he was, you know, not put. Maybe it was something along the lines of. You know, I don't know because that's something we have to talk about as a team or we need to see yeah. who's going to rise to the occasion. I don't know. But from your typical White Sox fan, that probably doesn't look very good when you just come out and say, I don't know. Uh, and then he was asked about last year he played a lot of DH because he was injured all the time. And how would he feel about doing that next season? And would he accept that? And again, maybe a little bit of loss in translation. I don't know. But he came out and specifically said, I would not accept only being the DH. So I, I'm of two minds, and I'm curious where you stand on this video. I'm of two minds on this. So number one, it's been well documented. The White Sox told him, go practice playing right field. Get better at playing right field because Ben Attendi is now the left fielder. I'm still confused about that because right field is going to be harder to play than left field, and Eloy isn't necessarily the mm-hmm. best outfielder in the first place. He's injured himself numerous times out in the outfield and celebrating. Um, but... They had him do that, so maybe he's saying, "No, I'm not going to accept that because they told me to get better, and I'm hoping to get better." I'm trying to, I'm trying to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. But like Ozzie Guillen was on, I don't know if he was on the Score or NBC Sports Chicago, but he's like, "If I was the manager, I'd be like, you're going to play where I tell you to play, and that's it." So, like, do you foresee this being an issue down the road, or do you think this was just, "Hey, he wants to play outfield. It's still ultimately Pedro Gafal's call at the end of the day." But where do you stand on this? Yeah, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna know what how he's progressing. I can't imagine him playing right field. Like he was a liability in left field, and they just magically think he's gonna get be better in in right field than left field. I, okay, I I don't know. We'll see if it works out. I mean, I. I I mean, he's there's a big potential. He's gonna cost him runs out there being being bad. Uh, he could also he could also severely hurt Luis Robert out in the field. Um, yeah, <laughs> just, I mean, he took out you know, Charlie Tilson, right? Yeah, a, a ball. Respect. Yeah, I man, I, I just don't get it. But again, uh, the coaching staff's gonna know better than we do we're just making assumptions we're not watching them out there um so i guess yeah i mean like you said maybe they've already told them like we're giving you a chance you're not going to be just a dh uh with us we still believe that you can you have value out in the field so yeah why would he be like no i want to be a dh if he's been told otherwise and i'm sure the competitor in him wants to be out there playing defense as well as offense, being able to contribute and not just sitting on the bench during a half inning, watching other guys be out on the field. Like I'm sure he wants to be a part of that. Cause I'm, I have to imagine being a DH only, you kind of feel left out from the team as the team win aspect, because all you're doing is going up there with a bat 
every half in you know every half inning for you know maybe one or two innings uh, you know every, you know you're waiting two innings uh to get up to bat so yeah i could see that from that point um you know realistically i from a coaching standpoint if i'm pedro grafol i'm looking yeah I, i'm looking at other options for right field and you're not it <laughs> you're the <laughs> you're the bottom of the barrel uh you're going to be a sub on uh left field uh giving benintendi a rest uh not even considering him right field unless he's the last option um yeah so that that's where i'm at on that the um quote on the clubhouse leader like you said um english isn't his first language i feel like maybe there was something lost in translation it's definitely not a good look for him to be like well i don't know like yeah i'm assuming it's got to be well i don't know yet because we haven't you know been together yet you know they'll they'll all figure it out in spring training you know that's something that should have been also maybe added to his answer like oh you know i don't know yet we'll have to wait till spring training yeah. comes around and we'll see uh, because you know from what we've heard jose Abreu was a, a leader in the clubhouse maybe not a local a vocal one local one a vocal one um but uh yeah i he was the leader of the clubhouse and a lot of guys looked up to him so you know not having that there not knowing who to look up to if that was especially if that's you know his perception too he, if that was his go-to guy and he's no longer there yeah, who's he? He doesn't know who to go to. He doesn't know who to talk to, and you know maybe right. who's gonna help him out. So yeah, that that does make sense. Um, you know the more you think about it. So, yeah, that that's kind of where I'm at on that. His quotes uh, this week. Yeah, I I think you nailed it. I think too. I mean, right field. They've said that it's it's for lack of a better phrase, it's Oscar Colas's job to lose for the most part. It sounds like so. You know, yeah. okay, if you put if you give Eloy what, 45, 50 games in right field, Ben Attendee's gonna need time off. Uh you're gonna need DH. Do you let him play first if Andrew Vaughn needs a day off? I don't know. I mean Yasmani Grandal so. Yasmani Grandal's gonna need some DH time too, because he ain't gonna he's not gonna catch more than what, three or four games a week, probably. I mean and he's definitely yeah. not doing back to back not you know, night game to night game or day game to I should, let me rephrase it. Shimmy, he's probably not doing night game to day game, and there might be some times yeah. where he doesn't play night game, night game, too. So um, it was very interesting. It just was a weird story. And again, I think maybe a little blown out in some aspects, but, you know, it could have maybe been other ways to handle it. Now, uh, that was on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the very yep. next day, uh, this story broke. Uh, Mike Clevenger former Cleveland Indian, and then was sent to San Diego, and he only stuck there, I think, for half a season. Uh, he has been um, – there are allegations of child abuse and domestic abuse against his – I don't know if it was his girlfriend, wife. Was it wife? It might have been wife. Girlfriend um, at the okay. time. And his the mother of his child, who I believe is 10 months old, if I'm not mistaken, um, yes. she she alleged in a bunch of Instagram posts and there's v pictures of bruising and, and cuts and things. Um, you know, it, if you want to seek that out, by, by all means, very easy to find. Uh, but the, the, the interesting thing is the White Sox immediately came out and said we didn't know about this. Uh, the Athletic reported based on their reports. I believe it was Katie Strang, who's an awesome reporter. She used to do some NHL reporting, too. Uh, she, from what I gather, said that the White Sox did not know, um, you know, allegations of child abuse, supposedly spitting tobacco chew on his 10 month old, like what, yeah. what is wrong with you? Right. So, um, yeah, not, not painted in a good light. The, the interesting thing that came out from this and, and I don't know how I feel about this. I'm curious how you feel is the MLB can be investigating a player and they will not tell the clubs, even if the club signs that player, uh, they are not, they are not privy to have to tell them in the players association. If they are aware of an investigation, they do not have to tell the team either. So I, I and I get, you know, if, if you're being investigated, people aren't going to want to sign you. So I get that aspect of it. But I mean, in terms of a PR, this is a nightmare for, for the White Sox, who've already had a bad offseason and a bad couple of years uh, going off the, mm -hmm. the Tony hire. And 
it's just it's it's sad. I think first and foremost, and I think Herb Lawrence said it best. I was listening to the CHGO White Sox podcast. Is you know first and foremost, yes, the the domestic abuse is awful. But like his his primary was like that that kid who's ten months old, and if that all these things that are alleged are true, um, which I don't have any reason to believe they're not at this point yet, but um. You feel for that kid because even at 10 months, that kid's going to be a little messed up when their father figure is spitting on them. Um, you know, it's just it, it's insane. So I know a lot of fans want him gone. Uh, the, the the White Sox said they're not making any statement on this until I don't know if they said indefinitely or until they the, the investigation is cleared. So like three weeks, spring training comes up. Rick Hahn is going to be asked about this. So I wonder what they're planning for that ahead of time. Um yeah, it's just it's a mess. I don't know what was your takeaway after this story broke. Yeah, that was <laughs> no mess is a, a great way to put it. I mean, the White Sox found out about it after they had signed him. Definitely wasn't the day the news broke. Well, let's be no. honest with that. They they've known more than twenty four hours probably before that. They if knew I'm that. Rick Hahn, I'm looking. Um, our situation would be, you know, if I was Rick Hahn, I would have came out and said, we are looking at our situation, and our options uh, from a legal perspective on what we can do. Um, no decision has been made at this time. That's what I would have said instead of we're waiting for the investigation. I would be at least giving the fans, you know, the letting them know that, yeah, we effed up and we're trying to look into this uh, yeah. and trying to figure out what the heck to do. Um to kind of rid ourselves of this guy. I, I I know there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, well, he's innocent and proven, you know, until proven guilty, pr- until proven guilty. That doesn't apply in this is instance. This is in the court of law. This is, um, this is office conduct. Um, yeah. and if you're abusing somebody, you, an employer has a right to distance themselves and, and alleviate them from you exactly. regardless of the, uh, the outcome and what, what really happened. Um, you know, MLB is doing their investigation. I think that is a crime in itself that teams can't, aren't, aren't, aren't told Made that aware. from the MLB. Yeah. Yeah. I do understand the, you know, the devil's advocate. Well, yeah. what if it's a false, you know, the allegation. The, okay. Yeah. But they should still be made aware. Um, but again, that doesn't excuse the White Sox for not doing any due diligence whatsoever yeah. on this, because like like you said, there were social media posts out there about this. There were rumblings about this guy being kind of a jerk. So where there's smoke, there's fire. I mean, we already know his past in Cleveland yeah. with uh, Trevor a, Bauer you know, a breaking COVID <laughs> protocols yes. when one of the pitchers in the rotation was uh who was recovering from leukemia plus i think terry francono also was yeah he's uh, had major health issues he was yeah uh, yeah so this guy clearly has got issues there's you know it was a bad signing to begin with this just kind of adds to the pile uh they had better options out there than signing this this jag off um and i i you know they need to do anything they can to get rid of this guy. Uh, I I don't I would be shocked if this comes out and you know there are no allegations and nothing was found that he did anything wrong uh, from yeah. the 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 po- social media posts and a lot of the other talk because I think his I think he had a wife too. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, there was multiple before this girlfriend yes. that he oh he and said he's a you know serial cheater you know he's not a good guy he's he's very manipulate manipulate oh i can't say the word you Uh, can't talk i can't remember this week it's all right it's okay yep exactly we're we're a pair um (laughs) when's craig getting back (laughs) i know (laughs) the two of us make Um, one podcaster at this point so (laughs) right um but yeah so i i think um and greg made a good point on twitter that the socks can't cut him because if they cut him now he gets all 12 million so yep, you don't exactly. want to pay a, a, a potential abuser but at the same time they should be looking at, i mean there's got to be something in there or out there i'm not a lawyer so i wouldn't know but from a legal aspect that would the contracts technically you know agreed upon like a, in bad faith that this guy's yeah, like a, a conduct you know, right like a conduct clause yeah or something, like, something that. like that but i guess i don't the players union really has that uh 
the, they must that have pull. that uh, boilerplate out there the, the, that doesn't include stuff like that to have teams easily get out of stuff like that. Um, right. Clearly, with the Trevor Bauer, that took a while for the Dodgers to be able to get out of that. So Right. Well, there was, there yeah, was already just, White Sox it, fans on Twitter saying, oh, well, let's go get Bauer now. And it's like, uh... <laughs> Okay. No. okay. There, uh, there was right. one, one, com- one tweet, one tweet I read this week was like, "Well, at least Bauer didn't do anything to a kid." I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like this is where we're at right. now. Like you know, they're both heinous crimes. Uh, yeah. and there's, and, there's still yeah. better options out there. Yes. There's still way better options out there for him to go after. I mean, Michael Walker's out there for yeah. Pete's sakes. He's still a I good would, pitcher. Yeah. So yeah. This was a bad signing, and this just doubled down on how bad it is. And for the White Sox to not have done their due diligence on this, and now caught down, you know, caught with their pants down again after the Tony debacle, you know, him having a DUI and them still signing him, it's just it's such a bad look. And for a franchise that's in a contention window that really doesn't seem like a contention window, to be honest. Not anymore. And trying to, you know, get in the good graces of their fans. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not a good week. Thankfully, they got Stoney and uh, Bonetti uh, signed up because that's, yeah. that would have been, that would have been the cherry on top uh, yeah. if that would have, if that had not gone through this week. Or even I, at all, if they would have lost them. This, this might be a... We might need to reach out to Jason Kendall about this. Maybe he would have a little insight. I would be very curious. What due diligence do teams do when they sign a player? Is it yeah, reach out to maybe one teammate, one former manager? Oh, yeah, he's a good guy. Okay, good clubhouse guy. We're good. Okay. It, you know, are they doing background checks? Because I would imagine if they did a background check, supposedly there were written police reports on some of the situations with his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend at this point. So... If there's a police report, I would imagine that's public record that a background check yeah. would find, right? I, I think. I don't yeah. – I'll be honest. As somebody who's never been in a police report, I don't know how that exactly works. Uh, knock on wood so far. But um, I, I don't know how if you don't even do a background check, which may be silly for a professional athlete. I don't know. But, like, that's going to catch that. And like you said, I think it's very interesting that if you could get out of it, you know, without having to pay that person – because of their conduct or, you know, conduct unbecoming of a professional athlete or something like that. I I don't know how that works, you know? So, yep. um, yeah, it, it's going to be very interesting for White Sox fans sake. I hope there's, you know, I don't want to rush the investigation because there's people's, you know, like uh, livelihoods here at stake. But like, if he shows up to spring training, that's a real bad look. Like, do you put him on administrative yeah. leave and just say, Hey, they're going to have to do that. You're going to have to just sit this and one out. Yeah. That's what the Hawks did with uh, Patrick Kane when, when those allegations the, came up. Yes, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. Especially, too, like with the cabby stuff in Buffalo and all that. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be very curious to see what happens. I think this story is just getting started. And, I mean, in the in what for White Sox fans, I guess, at least this guy has never technically played for you yet. He, you know, yeah. he's a fifth starter at best. It's not like it's somebody that you've grown up watching and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you have the rug pulled out from you in terms of what type of person this is. Um, I guess that's like a, a silver line. Like there's not a silver lining here. I don't know, but no. it's just, it's, it's messed up. And hopefully this guy, you know, I'd like to think karma will catch up with him eventually. I hope. Um, but yeah, hope. I mean, realistically, if, if this come, you know, I think these allegations and which are you know, like, I think you nailed it best. This is not a courtroom. This is not a legal case. It's if you do something stupid and there's allegations, your employer has every right to say, all right, see ya. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, goodbye. So, you know, in that regard, I really think if he, he was hanging on in terms of a roster spot by a threat in general, it's the White Sox who got him. Uh, I, this might, that might be the end of him after this. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, could be, I, I kind of hope Very it is, well could be. but, um, yeah. So there you go. Uh, we did have one piece of White Sox trivia from your dad. All right, Vinny, out of these four managers, which one was tossed out the most, uh, as a White Sox manager? Was it a Jerry Manuel B Tony La Russa, C Ricky Renteria or D Ozzy Guillen? Do you have any guess as to which manager was tossed out the most as a White Sox coach? Ozzy would be my first guess. Mm-hmm. Um, 
gosh and i'm trying to think but i don't think he would be the obvious one but i so i'm not going to pick him because of that um i don't think rick would have been god that would be impressive if rick would have been um tossed out the most because he wasn't there that long he was there for what two years two years yeah okay tony was there the longest but i don't remember tony really being a fiery type of guy but i also don't know jerry is jerry manuel yes he was with the mets right for a while he might he might have been i just remember watching white Sox games as a kid and jerry manuel just had no affect whatsoever like he would just be seeing yeah, the dugout Yeah, I think he was staring. with the Mets, and I remember him the same way. I'm going to say Tony La Russa. You are correct, Vinny. Well done. All right. Uh, your dad writes in and says, Tony La Russa had 32 ejections. Ozzie Guillen had 27. This is the surprising one here. Ricky Renteria had 24, which wow. I I don't even know. I mean, Ricky Renteria seemed like such a calm guy. And then Jerry Manuel had 19. And I feel like Jerry Manuel was manager for a while. They just never got rid of him. Uh yeah. So yeah. Um, so what? I think I think Rick probably ends up winning that if you go by probably games, games managed. Managed. If you, yeah, I think you you're know, right. Throw outs per game managed. He probably wins that. And I, I you right. know, the thing about Rick Renteria that you said it was surprising. There was just a clip I think this past week of him getting thrown out of a game and making the umpire walk over to the dugout to throw him out. He sat in the dugout, yelled, barking at the umpire, and got the umpire to walk over to the dugout to throw him out of the game. So I could, after seeing that clip, I can totally see him being thrown out the most. But, you know, Ricky's boys funny. don't quit, right? That's right. They don't quit, even when he's fired. Um, All right, last thing before we get to the football and then whatever. I was oh, just curious. I was going to say – um. One thing with the White Sox, uh, there was another kind of snafu that came up, uh, I think, just today, okay. where we were talking about the um, the new bar at the 500 level, um, and we were I kind of talking about how <laughs> pathetic uh, that looked and how that wasn't impressive at all. Supposedly, they had um, an idea for a grander venue uh, and grander bar, but then when the budget came up on it, they <laughs> had to scale it back because Jerry did not want to spend the money on it. So this whole not doing due diligence, I'm sure that all comes down to a money thing. Cause there's firms you can probably outsource that work to. If you don't want to, if you don't have the staff to do it, they could have paid somebody to do that. Cause that's what corporate businesses do. And I'm sure Jerry's like, nah, that's okay. Rick, Rick, ask him if there's anything that we should be worried about with them. If he says no, then we'll just take him at his word. <laughs> I, 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 I make sure he doesn't have his fingers surprised. crossed, you know? Yeah. I, right. I don't, I don't know how you draw plans and you kind of have a, probably a ballpark of how much this is going to cost you. And then you're like, no, nah, we're going to have to cut back. I don't want to spend that. Like, right. Oh my God. Like that's like, just pathetic. Or you know, just yeah. scrap the whole plan at, you know, yeah. Why bother scrap it all then? <laughs> why bother? Just, just wing it, you know, leave, leave the stadium yep. as is then at that point. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you remember that. Cause that was pretty funny. Uh, kind of a, a bummer of a note. The only, uh, guy besides Fred McGriff, who's also going in the hall of fame this year is Scott Rowland, which we kind of talked about in our text chain. And I'm trying to find the, uh, the percentages. I know I have saved on my phone here. Scott Rowland, like I think got like 76%, 76% sounds about right. Um, as a kid, I remember him being very good with the Phillies in the late nineties, early two thousands. I remember him being good with the Cardinals for three, four years, uh, and then apparently he was a Blue Jay for a season. I have no recollection of that. <laughs> right. And then and then he was on the Reds, which I very vaguely remember. And I remember him just being average at that point. So I just he's a guy I never considered a Hall of Fame worthy guy. Like when I think Hall of Fame, I'm thinking of these classics, you know, Griffey and Ripken and Gwynn. Mm-hmm. And not, I mentioned those three and those are like my three favorite baseball players of all time. And Maddox, you know, um, I don't think Scott Rowland and it was kind of disappointing. Like Todd Helton, I would consider him more of a hall of famer over Scott Rowland, which maybe is crazy talk. Granted, you know, Helton played in quarter field for half his half of all the games he played. Same thing Mm -hmm. with Billy Wagner. I will still beat the Billy Wagner drum. When that guy came into a game as a closer for the Astros, especially, and for the Mets into the Phillies too, but Astros, especially when he came in, that game was 
over. Like, to me, like, that's Hall of Fame worthy right there. So I don't, I feel, I don't know. I feel like the voters got it wrong this year. It blows my mind that Omar Vizquel is still getting votes. That man is another man that shouldn't be anywhere near the Hall of Fame. Uh, another White Sox hire as well. Uh, yeah. N- another, oh boy. Um, I don't know. Is there anybody on the Hall of Fame ballot that you're kind of hoping gets in or is disappointed that they didn't get in? No, I mean, I, the Hall of Fame is a joke at this point. At this I mean, point, yeah. They don't have Bonds in there. They don't have Sosa in there or McGuire. Um, and they should be. Uh, they should be in. Uh, and if you're not going to do that and you're going to have guys like Scott Rowland getting in, okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, it's whatever. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it. Uh, real quick, Rowland had 76%, Helton 72 so – realistically next season if he gets a couple more votes he might get in uh wagner had 60 he was 11 votes short they said yeah uh wagner had 68 percent, also close andrew jones 58 percent. gary sheffield 55 carlos beltran 47 jeff kent 47 i think he's done now alex rodriguez 35 manny ramirez 33 omar vizquel 20 percent. andrew pettit andy pennant sorry uh 17 who, who would that be jose not jose abreu um, it played for the Phillies. I can't think of his first name now. He had 16%. Jimmy Rollins, 12. Mark Burley, 10. Ka- Francisco Rodriguez, 11. And Torrey Hunter, 7%. So um, I was looking at the, the, the stuff for next season. There's nothing really that kind of jumps out at me in terms of guys next season. I don't know. We'll, we, we can talk more about that in the future. Do we want to shift gears real quick to football? Sure. All right, let's do it. Manures of the Midway, <laughs> where the guys talk the pile of horse crap that is the Chicago Bears. I mean, when you consider the other choices, manure is actually pretty refreshing. <laughs> All right, uh, Vinny. So far, in terms of football predictions, you are at nine and one. I'm at ten and zero. Oh. We know that the next round is Bengals, Chiefs, and 49ers, Eagles. Um, who you got for Bengals, Chiefs, Vinny? Man, I'm gonna. I don't know. Depends on what Patrick Mahomes' injuries like. Injury was um, his ankle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go Chiefs. I guess on this okay. one, they're at home. If if he's yeah, I don't know. He's Patrick Mahomes is so good. Um, but I'm gonna have to. I'll go with the Chiefs on that one. They get redemption for last year. All right. I'm going to go Bengals. I think this is Joe Burrow's year. I think they're going to make it back to the Super Bowl and maybe finish the job. I don't know. We'll see. Um, But, yeah, they looked pretty good last week. I, but, again, like you said, if Patrick Mahomes is healthy, he can take anybody out. So nothing too crazy there. What about 49ers, Eagles, Vinny? Who you got? I am going to say the Eagles. Um, they just been, They've been playing well all year. Um, I know the 49ers are coming on strong, but um, I think the Eagles are a better team than Dallas was, and the 49ers yeah. did struggle against Dallas last week. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with the Eagles. I will second that. My heart says 49ers. I, I think it's just a cool story with Brock Purdy. I'd like to see them win and make it. I don't think that's going to happen, though. I think exactly like you said, they struggled against Dallas. The Eagles are much better than Dallas, especially this season. Uh, I think this is the Eagles year. So I think we get a Super Bowl of Eagles Bengals, uh, in February. We will see, um, anything else from the NFL, anything from the games that you caught, uh, that you'd like to mention or you good? No, I'm just tired of all the mock drafts that are coming up already. Um, (sighs) that bear fans are trying to, trying to come up with and get all these picks. And it's just like, it'd be great, but I don't, I don't know. The last I one I gonna happen. the last one I saw said that they were going to trade their picks to the Raiders, their number one pick to the Raiders, get the Raiders first round pick, a second and third round pick, a first round pick for next year, and a first round pick in two years. And that I didn't like that. I didn't think that would. I don't. I wasn't. It's all. It's just exhausting at this point. I don't. Well, yeah, and, 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 and I don't. The, yeah. the Packers are trading Rodgers to the Jets, and they're going to get first round picks for him. And it's like I, I not at this point in your in his career, especially no. with this cap hit, that's uh, not going to happen. No, I, I just, it's just it's I, all yeah. obnoxious and exhausting. 
I I still I love enjoy listening. I I love and I enjoy and love listening to sports radio and the six seventy and stuff like that. But lately, as soon as I turn it on, and if they're talking Bears draft or Bears what they're gonna do, like I immediately just turn it off. I'm like, you know what? It's their season's done. There's nothing to talk mm-hmm. about right now. You know, I, I don't know what you talk about because the Bulls are bad, the Hawks are bad, and the White Sox and Cubs. Well, they're aren't playing. At least you can. They're, you you can yeah. talk and analyze that. Are you, they're going to keep talking about the draft and players that the Bears are combine, gonna, you know, and, what they're going to yeah. trade and stuff like that. It's yeah. I mean, I'd rather it's, them talk about the the Bears and Bulls. I can talk about the Cubs and the White Sox too. Yeah. The seasons are coming Spring up. Spring training's so. coming. So yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I think that's all we need to give to football talk. Are you ready for whatever? I sure am. All right, let's do it. Now it's time for whatever. 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 Whatever you want. Whatever I want. Whatever, dude. Irrelevant. Whatever, dude. All right, Vinny, take it away. Welcome to whatever baseball. This week we are counting or ranking. I keep saying counting down, but um, <laughs> we are ranking our top five movies from the year 2007. This was randomly picked, and surprisingly, it was a good year for movies as we will go through our list. Um, although I'm sure my list is pretty bad um, for the movies I selected, but the viewer write-ins were plentiful and they have a lot of good ones um, on there. So Justin, you can start it off this week. What is your number five ranked movie from 2007? All right. So I went back and forth on this one because I had found numerous places that said this was released in 2007 but re-released or got a wider audience uh or a general release in 2009 but technically it was released in 07 so i'm gonna go with this one um and that is and i and i don't like these types of movies that is paranormal activity okay um i honestly I was very you intrigued. Like Wait, hold on. You like that's a scary movie, it Justin. It is. It is. Um I I have a soft spot for as much as I hate scary movies, um I thoroughly enjoy um found footage movies. And this is like one of the ones I'd say probably Okay. You know, I I think Blair Witch, I was obsessed. I never saw Blair Witch until I was in college, but I was obsessed with that movie even though I never saw it as a kid cuz when it first came out, I thought it was real. I thought, you know, they found this tape and then they made it into a movie because uh, I was a dumb kid. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm double checking. Uh, it was it was screened and released at the Horror Film Festival in 07. It was at Slam Dance Film Festival in 08. And then it got its nationwide release in 09. So I guess technically it counts. But um there is something about found footage movies. Like I remember seeing Chernobyl Diaries as well. That movie sucked. Don't I'm awful. Don't see that movie. There's something about it though, like where like they're showing you through like the cameras in the house, and you know there. I will say the thing I have the toughest time with when it comes to scary movies is de- demonic like possession stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And this like nailed it and I, like this movie i still remember seeing this for the first time and i could not sleep that night because i was laying in bed thinking like <laughs> man you know that that looked pretty pretty real i i could be possessed tomorrow and who knows what would happen right now no, you never also- know the, the the blankets could fall off the bed or something like that and your yes. leg could get you, you got to make sure the blankets are really tucked in tight yes. so your leg well, isn't dangling off you don't let you don't yeah you don't dangle your legs over the bed that's rule number one i still don't like yeah. i always have to have my feet covered by the blanket and i'm 35 really I don't, yeah 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 because you never know <laughs> you never know what's waiting around the corner or under the bed or whatever um so yeah i, I paranormal activity 2 i saw that was pretty good too but the first one, like that ending scene where like shit has hit the fan. I think her the character's name is Katie. Like she kills the fiance or the the, the husband. I can't remember. Spoiler alert. Um, and then you see like a glimpse of her face after when she's fully possessed. And like that, that scared the shit out of me. Even as a 2007, I would have been, like I said, a junior, sophomore in college. So 21, 22, 23, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. 21, 20, 20, 21. 
Uh, yeah, so that's my number five. I know it's kind of wishy-washy with the dates, but technically it's listed as an 07 movie on IMDb. So I'm going to take that because uh, they're the, you know, they they know what they're talking that's, about. That's uh, what... I will allow that. That's, that's Thank fine. you. Thank it, you. That's it, as long as IMDb says 2007, we'll go with that. I will You're screenshot okay, it Justin. and send it to you just to be safe. I, I believe you because I right, saw good. it show up anyways when right, I was going, making through my list. So. All right. Yep. Good. Um, that that's a good one. I was that's kind of a shocker for I know, for right? You, and yeah. in my opinion, um, it is. It, it is, is scary movie. So I'm not yeah, gonna that, go back and watch one. it. I'm not gonna go back and watch it, but I enjoyed <laughs> it. <laughs> um, yeah, I I know we watched like a bunch of those because it's like a huge like series. They got like five or six of them. They did one that takes place know, in the 80s. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and I know one of them ties into that first one um that i saw that that i thought was kind of cool how they did that so yeah it's kind of cool how all those movies kind of end up tying in together um but yeah good good choice Uh, thank you surprising choice uh being a scary movie from you justin thank you thank you um (laughs) my number five was harry potter and the order of the phoenix Um, uh i I liked that movie. It was the first one in the movie series that got like really, it was dark from beginning to end. The Goblet of Fire was kind of dark, but it was still, they were still kind of kids and there was still some funny stuff in there. I mean, this one was just kind of dark from beginning to end um, because, you know, Voldemort's in power. And this one also is my favorite uh, soundtrack, I guess. The score for this is, like, one of my favorites uh, for the Harry Potter movies. So, yeah, that made number five for me just because of the the, the movies, I think, one of the better ones. Um, It's one of my favorite movies. And, again, the score in that is fantastic. I Is that the one that's got, like, a part one and part two? No, that's the very last one. The Deathly okay. Hollows. All right, so I've seen part two of Deathly Hollows. I've seen uh, the Sorcerer's Stone, and I've seen okay. Uh, what's the one with uh, not Severus Snape? Lu- is it Lucius something 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 black? What's that guy's character's name? Oh, um, yeah. What? God, now it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> that one I liked. I actually, yes. I, I actually uh, liked uh, that uh, one. It's not uh, Sever- what Prisoner is of Azkaban. Uh, Cyrus, Cyrus Prison- Black. Cyrus Black, Prisoner of Azkaban. Yes. I liked that movie a lot. That's a good one. Um, that was a I really have, good one. I have never read any of the books, so I feel like I somehow missed out that on this whole. That is surprising for you, Justin. Yeah, I know. Like I'm into nerdy shit, and I somehow missed out on this whole cult- cultural touchstone. Like I have no. I, you know, the movies are fine. I saw them. I'm like, I'm all right, cool. You know, the like books just, are better than the movies. That's what I've heard. But like, yeah, I, I somehow, I don't know if just because I was in an age where I was like, nah, I'm good. I don't need to read that, but totally missed all of that. So like, I have no affinity, no understanding. Like I got the Quidditch and the golden snitch and, uh, uh, Leviosa, not Leviosa or whatever the hell the first thing is that Hermione says. Yep. Um, you know, through like cultural osmosis, but uh, yeah, well, that's a good pick. Uh, and I know, I know you are a yeah. big Harry Potter fan. So I, I think you're going to have to read those books. They're a super quick read. And now that, you know, Maddie's around, you're going to have to yeah. get into that. Cause I'm sure at some point she's going to get into Harry oh, Potter. So yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. You might as well just read the books and knowing how fast you read, I'm sure you could probably knock out the series in like two weeks. I know when I've read the series twice, to be honest. Um, really? And I know. Yeah. And I know it took me. I want to say it took me. I think it took me about a year maybe to read through all the books again. I'm not okay. a fast reader by any means, but the, the books are, I mean, they're written for kids. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's it'll be a quick it would be a cr- quick read for you justin see my my problem is like i when i'm engrossed in a book i can read it pretty fast but then like i get sidetracked and be like oh like i have this ricky henderson book i love it and i've been reading it for over a month because i took a break during the holidays and i just started reading it like and it's killing me that it's just sitting there but like usually i can knock it out really quick but then i get sidetracked with like oh i want to watch tv or oh i want to play playstation and then i you know take a break mm-hmm. from reading but yeah, so there you okay. go. But yes, eventually I'm gonna have to dive into that. So, for All right. sure. Um, moving on to number four, Justin. Yes, this came out 
February 2nd, I'm sorry, February 23rd, 2007. Uh, I had not seen this until probably like three years ago, but I love the TV show. I'm so glad they brought it back because it's still pretty good. And that is Reno 911 Miami. <sighs> that was such a bad movie. <laughs> oh, Vinny, it's so good. It's just like an hour and is a half it? long Reno 911. I love Reno 911 with a passion. Like there I are love s- the show, but the movie just didn't, didn't like do it, it for, no? for me. In Miami? No, yeah. I didn't like that Miami no? stuff. Eh. All right. Well, that I enjoyed it. it. For me. I, I loved that, you know, I loved what they did. I love the fact they brought it back. Have you watched any of the new stuff on like Hulu or anything? I don't even know if it's on Hulu. Maybe no, it's not I on haven't. Hulu. The new, the new series, Hulu. it's probably like... Um, I think it's only like eight or ten episodes but like it's actually really good like they did not miss a beat like i thought for sure i'm like oh this is gonna be a cash grab but the almost the entire original cast is back even though most of them were killed off in the last series last season of the show um oh, were or they or not or not i'm sorry not the last season but like there was a midpoint where they brought on a bunch of new cast and they killed off half the cast uh and just said oh okay. yeah they, they died you know and like a, i think it was like a a parade accident with their float or something. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, I, I enjoyed that movie. It's stupid. It's very stupid. I mean, seeing dangle out there, you know, with his Miami get up, uh, cracks me up every time. Um, yeah. If you want something to laugh at, that would be my recommendation, even though it's stupid, funny, not like, you know, very, um, deep thinking and comical and satirical, I guess you could say. So, yeah, there you go. Well, um, I I would say your first pick was better than your was better? second yeah. one. Um, yeah, I just yeah, Fair that, I saw that movie. It was just I just remember it being so just like it was bad. It wasn't. It's stupid. I love the show. Though. I love the TV show, but it, it, putting him in Miami, I just thought it was silly. Uh, it is. Sense. It is. It definitely is. Uh-huh. They should um, just they should have just done something in Reno or Vegas or something. You know, something closer than Miami. like why i don't even remember why, why. miami why? yeah i don't i don't even yeah. well and maybe that's saying something about the movie i don't remember why they were in miami i don't remember the main was it a plot police of convention the movie. was might that have been what a convention i remember there being a whale that was washed up on the beach that you know uh i think they didn't it, know how to get they, they didn't they, they didn't know how to get rid of they blow up the whale i think junior falls into the blowhole of the whale like yeah it's stupid <laughs> Stupid with a capital S, um, but yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I don't know how my my pick will be viewed, but my number four pick is Ocean's Thirteen. Oh, uh, good it, choice. Good choice. I love that. The entire series um, was great, uh, and it was a great way to wrap up the uh, the Ocean. I guess I don't uh, trilogy. Ones, you know, I don't the know. Eleven yeah. cast. I guess I would say that because they came out yeah. with Ocean's Eight, right? Um, yes yeah what, about five years ago or so something like that yeah um, but yeah that i mean ocean 13 was a great way to wrap it up um it was i think better than 12 mm-hmm. and it's great cast al pacino is the bad guy in it um in in uh las vegas that doesn't get much better than that uh yeah a lot of good good humor in it um and it was just a yeah it was a great way to put uh a bow on that that trilogy series I would completely agree with you. I I I love Ocean's Eleven, the the one that came out in like two thousand one. It's one of my. That's a great movie. But Ocean's mm-hmm. Twelve, I have actually never seen. Um, I, I somehow missed it. Ocean's Thirteen, I just remember it being on like cable a couple times, and like I started watching it. And I'm like, oh, this is just as good as the first one, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Al Pacino is the bad guy. Willie Bank, like so so good in them you know just the characters kind of evolving a little bit um i love the way they go along with you know getting the five diamonds stolen from him and andy garcia coming back but also still you can't trust him and his character Mm -hmm. um you know bringing in um what's what's the guy's name they I, i think he just passed away recently super dave i don't dave osborne as matt damon's dad who's you know part of it oh yeah pretending to be the FBI agent or the gaming commission or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I really liked it. I thought it was awesome. Um, really, mm-hmm. really good movie. I highly, highly recommend it. If you like any of those movies for sure. I think that's a great pick. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just, yeah. I mean, the, okay. 
from your perspective, that hotel, did that really look any fancy? Like, <laughs> No. Just, I, and I saw that. I'm like, I, I'm oh, glad you brought that up. It looks okay. It wouldn't be my okay. first pick on no, it. But he was, you know, but up like, for the five diamond award and everything. <laughs> the, the one thing that bugs me, and maybe this is just a Justin problem, is as I'm sitting there watching it and I'm looking at the architecture of the hotel, I'm like, Okay, how does that work when you look at the inside of the hotel? Like, I don't understand the spirals and, like, where's the actual... Right. Like, every, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of bugged me a, a little bit, but not enough to, to wreck anything in the movie for me. But, um, yeah, I, I think that's a, a phenomenal movie. Definitely one that I've seen multiple times, and I have a hard time sitting through movies I've already seen. So that tells yep. you something right there. So there you go. Yep. Um, okay, we're on to number three, Justin. All right, my number three, this came out on April 20th. Whoa, man. Uh, four tw- <laughs> I feel like Michael Scott. Oh, do- <laughs> Doobie, Rolling what is he? Doobies at the Rolling Doobie Brothers Doobies. concert. Do- Doobie Brothers, smoke. Rolling Doobies with my brothers. Everyone over the least says. Yeah, uh, something April- along those lines, yeah. <laughs> April 20th, 2007. Uh, I like most of... Um, this director's movies, I think it's called the Cornetto trilogy. This is probably my favorite one in the trilogy. Uh, and that is hot fuzz. Vinny, have you ever seen hot fuzz? I saw, yes, I want, I, well, I saw it. I don't know. I don't remember how, maybe I saw all of it. That this isn't the, don't they have a zombie one? That's yes, Shaun of the so Dead, right? Shaun of the Dead was the first one. That's the zombie one. Hot Fuzz is like okay. the buddy action comedy. Uh, and then there's I saw the that world. one. That then the good. world's the world's end was the last one. Probably, in my opinion, probably the weakest one. But um, that was like like alien like body snatcher takeover kind of thing. But this one is more like your police movie. And actually, out of all of them, I'm looking at IMDb. Uh, it looks like Shaun of the Dead has the highest rating out of all three. So. Um, yeah, it does. Okay. So anyway, Hot Fuzz, if you're not familiar, Simon Pegg and, uh, Nick Frost, who are very well known over in, uh, England, in the UK, uh, they, you know, Simon Pegg is like in Mission Impossible movies now, and I think he was in Star Trek too. Like he is, he was also in Star Wars. He played, um, the guy that Ray would turn in her findings to for food rations and uh, force awakens underneath whatever alien outfit that was. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah. So if, if you're nope. familiar with hot fuzz, it's, it's pretty much, uh, Simon Pegg plays this like amazing London police officer, but because he's so good at his job, he irritates his superiors and they transfer him to this really small village where it's just complete idiocy running the police force. Um, and a bunch of murders hit the town and what you realize is like there's like this secret underground group that any outsiders that cause any riffraff are just immediately killed and they make it look like an accident. And he uncovers this plot uh, and it turns into an action movie with him and Nick Frost. And Nick Frost is kind of like the bumbling police officer who I believe his dad is the com- the police chief or police commissioner. So he's mm-hmm. trying to go against his dad, too. Um yeah, I, I, I like it. It's a great action movie, uh, which is funny because you wouldn't think of Simon Pegg as an action star, at least in this point in his career. But uh, I think they nailed it, and there's some good British comedy in there, good good dark comedy as well. So highly recommend yep. it. Shaun of the Dead's really good, too, and so is The World's End, but um, this one's probably my favorite. So Nice. Good pick. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a good movie. Now, working through which one of those, because I haven't seen Shaun of the Dead, or I didn't even realize what Shaun called, of the, the Dead. World's End. The World's End. Shaun of the Dead is actually really... That's a horror movie, zombie movie that I actually like. Like, that's a really good movie. Um, And it's really funny for, like, the first, I don't know, hour, hour and 15 minutes. And then the end, like, there's a good 20 minutes where it takes a turn and it's, like, really dark. And then it and then it ends and it kind of ends on, like, more of a lighter, silly, funnier note. But um, it's a great, great zombie movie if you're any interest in a zombie movie, so... Highly recommend nice. it. I'll have to check that one out then. Yes. It's got the Justin guarantee, so you know it's good. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, unless it's Reno 911. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. Miami. Fair enough. Um, number three for me is uh, No Country for Old Men. Oh, uh, this okay. This was a really good movie. I've only seen this once um, just because of the length of the movie, but it, sure. it was. I remember watching it the first time, and I was like instantly hooked on it. Um, and I didn't see it until 
well after 2007, but, um, okay. yeah, I know it was something that was like on TV and I'd always see like maybe like 10, 15 minutes. It was always something I couldn't like, I was always doing something else. I couldn't just sit there and watch it. And then I, it was able to, uh, one year sit down and watch it. And man, it was so good. Um, Josh Brolin's great in it. The, the, the hitman, uh, Javier, Javier Bardem or something like Bardem. that. Bardem. Yeah. He was fantastic. That air gun, like air compressor gun he had was, that was, <laughs> that was wild. Um, and I love the tribute to that movie in, what was it? Grand Theft Auto, is it five? Is that the one that's yes. back in San Andreas? Yes, correct. Um, they yep. had a, I don't know if you remember that. They have a tribute to that, uh, the gunfight scene, like the early on when all the trucks, they, um, they're they all shooting at each other, like the two cartels show up, and that's when Josh Brolin gets the money. Um, uh, yeah, but that's they have a tribute to that in uh, Grand Theft Auto where you if you pull off on the side of the road down a dirt road, there is a standoff between two cartels, and you can steal the monies. And as soon as you steal the money, um, two cars come out of nowhere and like kind of track you down, um, and you have to defend yourself against them. So it's you know that's kind of cool, and the fact that obviously that movie had some impact on more than just a few people on how great that movie was. So yeah, my number three is uh, no country for old men. That is one I've always wanted to, I've never seen that movie. So I'm sure I got to that part of GTA five and it probably went right over my head because I've never seen mm-hmm. it. It's one that uh, is, is Tommy Lee Jones in that too? Or am I thinking of a different yes, movie? He is. Okay. I yep. I've heard amazing things. I've always wanted to see it. Um, any of the commercials or trailers I see with Javier Bardem, like he seems like such a menacing evil dude in that movie. I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe, maybe he's not, but um, yeah, it looks really good. Like I definitely need to check that out at some point for sure. So, yep, definitely should. All right. I'll, I'll give that, I'll add that to the list. So I'll probably be able All to get right. to it by the time Maddie turns like 16. So the, there you go. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, moving on. On to number two, Justin, what is your number two? Yes, uh, June 8th, 2007, shortly after my birthday. Uh, you already mentioned this one, and that is Ocean's 13. I don't have too much else to say about it. Nice. Just love, just love the – I love the aspect of them, like – that poor uh, hotel ranker, hotel evaluator guy just, like, has the worst experience in this hotel. Right. You know, and then they call it – he's the Susan B. Anthony, though, you know, because he's going to win – He's going to make money at the end because they feel guilty and he wins the lot. He wins the uh, the slot machine at the end in the airport. I love the I think it's Brad Pitt's like, oh, you should try this one. It, it's you know, it seems like yep. it's paying out, you know, and then he whatever the whatever the, the combination is of things he's got to do before he lets that guy do it. So um, great movie, great music, great score, great soundtrack. I love the jazz score and soundtrack in all of mm-hmm. three. Well, all the first two of the movies, because I haven't seen the second one, but um Really great job on closing the book. And like I said earlier, when you mentioned it, I really don't think there is any uh, decrease in um, not talent. Talent's not the right word, but like it it is right up there with Ocean's Eleven, in my opinion. Like there's there's no drop off. The quality it doesn't fall. Quality, thank you. There's there's no drop off. It wasn't like a cash grab type of thing. Exactly. There's no there's no drop off in quality. There's no drop off in acting. There's no drop off in script or cinematography. Like they nail it just as well as they do that first one. Um, so if you have ever been curious about any of those movies, highly recommend it. So, yep. Good, good choice. Thank um, you. Great job, Justin. Thank you. And a uh, uh, little trivia for you. Uh, Javier Bardem is in a Bond movie. Justin, do you know which Bond movie he's in? Uh, from Russia with Love. <laughs> No, that was a Sean Connery. Film. I know, I know. No, he was, was in Skyfall. Um, was he so, really? Okay. Yeah, it had to be a new one. I figured, but yeah. All right, cool. Man, but but you chose from Russia with Love. Of course, um, my my goal is if Greg's not on the show and he do, if he does listen, I gotta make his blood boil at least once uh, each episode. Try to get him so. back on just to gotta correct get, you. Gotta get him back on just to correct me. Yes, exactly. That's my goal. So Ocean's Thirteen. That was your number two. Yes, that was my number two. Okay, so on to me, number two. For me, it is I Am Legend, 
The Will Smith zombie, I guess, I don't know, day night walkers or whatever they call them. Um, Yeah. I thought that movie was such an interesting premise. It is. Um, was he's, he's the last guy on, was it, uh, Manhattan? It's Manhattan, I I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's the last one there. He's the lead scientist trying to correct this virus that's in, you know, these people infected everybody, pretty much turning them into zombies. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that's the best way to describe it. Uh, I can't imagine that uh, if you like movies, you have not seen this in some capacity because I think yeah. it was on FX for a long time. Every weekend? Was, yeah. Yeah. It was such a great movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool seeing him in this overgrown New York, and I think there's like a tiger that's got escaped yeah, from, from a yeah, zoo. From zoo. Yeah, yeah, and um, there's like wild deer roaming around New York City. I just I thought it was so fascinating to see what New York would look like if it ceased to have ceased to people be. living there yeah. and yeah nature started taking it back over pretty much um i also just you know in him being the pretty well what he thought was the only person that was on the island besides these zombies so mm-hmm. yeah i thought it was a great story uh, really cool premise um so yeah i am legend number two for me uh that is that is a really good movie definitely one that i have seen before i enjoyed it i want to say they are making a sequel to that did you know that no i did not hold on hold on i'm, I'm trying to pull it up here on imdb i could have sworn i don't know if will smith might have been it. talks about it but they kind of uh, they ended it they ended it yeah um let's see upcoming will smith will smith is in pre-production for bad boys 4 that is interesting uh i never saw bad boys three um okay well it it says i am to be at one point there was potential uh there was potential of an i am legend uh sequel but it is no longer in development so apparently there's a uh in development is hancock 2 which i never saw i never saw hancock one hancock was good it was Was kind of an anti-hero movie um i really enjoyed it if you like hero movies you'd probably like this Okay. You like Hancock. Interesting. All right. I'll have to give that a look. Um, all right. I guess it's time for my number one, right? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, this movie came out on August 17th, 2007. Uh, I love this movie. I cannot tell you how many times I have watched this movie. I probably saw it in theaters at least twice, and then I got it on DVD, and I remember just watching it nonstop with my friends because I just thought it was hilarious. And that is the one, the only, Cody Del Mendo's Super Bad. That's my too. I'm just okay, going to say it num- right, right now. Right, we just talk about that's it That's my number one. I, I love that movie so yep. much. It It is, you know, I know like, um, you know, people talk about Porky's, which I remember seeing once and I thought that was a ho- stupid ass movie. Uh, I'm, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Animal House I saw and I'm like, okay, it's fine. I don't know. Like I, maybe it's a time and a place kind of thing, but I feel like this was my like raunchy comedy movie and i you know i was the perfect i mean i was a little over a little past high school a couple years past high school at this point but it nailed it and i don't know if it's because i saw a little bit of myself in those two characters and evan and evan and um shit seth what seth thank you but you're more Uh, like mclovin right (laughs) i yeah i'm the one i never had a fake id in my life you kidding Right. I, I, for the longest time, I was afraid they were going to take my real ID and say they thought it was a fake and tear it up in front of me because um, I looked so young. <laughs> but that that movie, I, I mean, there are so many good quotes. You know, uh, Bill Hader and Seth Rogen is, yep. the, is these two bumbling idiot cops. You know, McLovin, this <laughs> making his name Muhammad on his ID or, or yep. saying he it was either between McLovin or Muhammad. Or in, Muhammad. Because yes, it's the most common name. <laughs> read a book, you know. Uh, the, the film debut of Emma Stone, um, which is crazy to think. Um, the, yeah, right. You know, the, the just the so many like weird scenes. The the facts when they're they're on the track and they're talking about how you know Seth uh, pissed his pants and and you know people don't forget. 
Uh, no, that's Dave. Franco's. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Greg. Dave. That was great. That was Greg Dave Franco's soccer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he, he just he, the the ball comes to Seth, and he just you know yeah. punts it. And what the what the what does he say? What the hell or what the fuck, Seth? And he's like, it's it's fucking yeah. soccer. It's soccer. And yeah. that just it Shut makes up, me laugh. Yeah, it it makes me and laugh. I, I love how the the teacher or the I don't know if it's the teacher or the coach knows his name. Yeah, like he's been out there for <laughs> Seth. Stop it. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, and then there's the scene where Seth inter- or uh, McLovin interrupts the home at class where they're baking whatever they're baking. Yes. And that teach that teacher's like, Fogel, bye. Like you can just tell yeah. this has repeatedly happened. And then Seth's speech to the, oh god, I all right, I hold on, I gotta pull this up because I just remember dying the the first time I heard this speech. Um, let me see here. Uh, when he when he comes into home at and he's talking with his the home at teacher and he's like. I'll give Homek another shot. I'm 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 gonna give it another shot just for you. Um, hold on here. Let's see. How can this not be in here? But yeah, like that movie just cracks me up. So you know, then mm-hmm. there's uh, Joe Lo Trulio from Brooklyn Nine Nine is this creepy guy that hits oh, them yeah. with a car and then Francis. says it's cool. Francis, it's cool, man. It's cool. Just just you know, come to this party. Come to my party, and then it right. ends up this party with cocaine and fighting and and you know all these horrible things. Um, you know, McLovin getting the, getting the liquor and, and the police coming to get him. How, how can they not have the quote with the home ec teacher on IMDB? This is insane. Um, was it from a deleted scene? Maybe, maybe I don't, uh, hold on. Let's see here. Here we go. Movie quote database. All right. Seth, I joined this class because I thought I was going to be cooking with a partner, but she's never here. And I don't get twice the grades for doing all the work. And then the teacher says, I didn't invent odd numbers, Seth. Like, what What kind of a comeback is that? I know, right. but look at Evan. Just look at him. Look how much fun he's having. And he's got his partner that's, like, rubbing the powdered sugar on his face. Right. And it makes him, you know. Um, and then he goes, I'm over here in my unit, isolated and alone, eating my terrible tasting food. And I have to look over at that. And that looks like the most fun I've seen in my entire life. And it's bullshit. Excuse my language. I'm just saying that I wash and dry. <laughs> I'm like a single mother here. Look, we all know home is a joke. No offense. It's just that everyone takes this class to get an A, and it's bullshit. And I'm sorry, and I'm not putting down your profession, but it's just the way I feel. I don't want to sit here all by myself cooking this shitty food. No offense. And I just think that I don't need to cook tiramisu. Am I going to be a chef? No. There's three weeks left of school. Give me a fucking break. I'm sorry for cursing. Like, and it, it's it's so funny that, that that's how he talks to the teacher. I'm sorry for cursing at the very end. Right. And the teacher's just like, all right, go, go partner up with Jules, which kicks off the whole movie that, you know, he wants to date her and... And all yep. these things. Supposedly, the scene where he gets drunk at Jules' party and he falls and hits her in the head. Uh, uh, Emma Stone's reading to that where she's like, what the fuck? Like, that was supposedly was all ad-libbed. Like, that was not the line. But Oh, I, really? Yeah, I don't know if he he really hit her harder than he was supposed to. Um, you know, the scene with McLovin when he scores with that girl. I don't remember what name they give her. He, Christopher Mintz Plas, I think is his name. He, the actor, he was yes. only 17 when that movie was made. So his mom had to be there when they filmed that scene. Oh, that's awkward. How, how awkward would that have had to have been? That would have been, uh, that would have been yeah. really awkward. And, and I love the fact that the police show up right when he's there, right in the moment. And she runs off and they're like, oh, we are, right? we are so sorry. We're, yeah. oh, McLovin, nice. Like, <laughs> It's so stupid, but it's so funny. <laughs> they were great oh as the the police yes. officer. I love the, I like that when the the they uh, Mc, or the liquor store gets robbed and the guy oh, punches yeah. McLovin. What did he look like? And the the <laughs> clerk is like, he looked like Eminem. <laughs> Eminem the candy? No, Eminem the rapper. Like and they're like he drew like an Eminem instead of like the person. He's like, did it look like this? No, Eminem the rapper, you moron. Yeah. <laughs> I just love that. Was he was he oh. what does he say? Was he was he African? Is that you know, I he doesn't know what to say. Did he look clerk? like us or did he look like <laughs> you? You. Yes. And then she's like, I don't what what does the clerk say? I don't have time for this shit. I have a yeah. I have a, a college test tomorrow or I have an exam MCATs tomorrow. MCATs to be studying MCATs, for or yeah. something like that. And then she walks out and I can't remember if it's Bill Hader or Seth Rogen, but they're like, she's got an exam to study for. Like, like kind of, yeah. you know, giving her a hard time. But, <laughs> oh, my God, there's so many there's so many good lines, you know, there uh, really when, is. 
when they're trashing the car at the end, so then that way the you know the two cops don't get uh, caught. Yeah, they just say that it's stolen. Yeah, we'll we'll just say it was stolen. It's no big deal. Um, God, I if if you are in for a funny movie and you don't mind it being raunchy and disgusting at times, I I'd say yeah, probably in my top ten of movies all time, and it's one that I haven't watched in a while. I really need to go back and watch it. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I I just you know, Fogel. Fogel, I love, you know, I love, I love when he he spills all the bottles of beer and they crack everywhere. And the poor convenience worker, he's like, right. "Sir, did you spill these beers?" No. Yeah. Somebody and should I really love clean how he this kick, up. Like kicks them to he the side. <laughs> yes. Yes. Somebody so, should clean this up. Some, somebody should really clean this up. Zach says they were baking pizzas. Um. Yes, I. You know. I, I'm looking at the quotes, just trying to see if there's, you know, getting the gold schlager for her, and you know, mm-hmm. um, oh, I, I, yeah, going back to the cop line, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start for, uh, okay, look, he assaulted the customer, grabbed the cash, and ran out. So how, uh, say when, height wise, and and he's just yeah. going up like this. <laughs> I think and, what hater was going up, and then Seth and Rogen he's was going, going down. down. <laughs> And then, and then I love, he goes, uh, e, uh, uh, eth- eth- ethnically, I mean, did, um, I mean, was he, was he like us or like you? Uh, and she goes, a woman, a female, is that what you're asking? Yeah. No, I would say, was he, was he African? Was he African? No, he was American and he was like you. He looked just like you. And I think it's Seth Rogen goes, ah, so he was Jewish. Well, this is an odd crime for them to right. commit. So we have <laughs> We have an African Jew wearing a hoodie. Like it, it's so yeah. it's so goofy. They are so inept, so horrible. Um, yeah, I I don't and know. They're looking it, at McLovin's uh, ID and they're like, ah, organ donor. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I love too. Uh, you know, Fogel's got the vest on when he comes out of work, and he's like, yes, take off the vest. Pinocchio. You look like Aladdin or Pinocchio or, or something. Aladdin, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh my God. I I'm gonna have, I might have to watch a couple clips of this before I go to bed tonight. But yes, and you know I, I won't go into it on here because that'll be I'm sure that won't end well. But the whole scene of why Seth hates Becca, who is the girl that Evan likes, and they're sitting in the the cafeteria, and he's explaining to her the problem he had when he was a kid. Oh my God, I've never laughed so hard in my life. Um, right. Yeah. 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 It's. Oh, I, I don't know what else to say. It's just such a good movie. So it really is. It really, it really is. is. But uh, I got nothing else. Vinny, you got anything else? Okay. Um, no, we can uh, go through listener uh, feedback. All right. Submissions, if you yeah. want. Uh, I sure. think I have some uh, honorable mentions that are in there, anyways. Okay. Um, okay, I will start. Chris writes in. He goes, uh, love making the topic more specific. My brain there goes go. uh, over time on topics spanning a, a decade or more. <laughs> You're welcome, Chris. We'll probably be doing that uh, going forward and trying to narrow it down as best as possible. I agree. I agree. Um, but Chris's list was number five, Ocean's 13. Number four, Transformers. That was an honorable mention. Number three, Alpha Dog. Uh, number two, Born Ultimatum. And number one, Knocked Up. And he said, if asked in 2008, um, number five, Knocked Up, number four, Transformers, number three, Born Ultimatum, number two, Super Bad, number one, Alpha Dog. Alpha Dog was oh, a really good movie. okay. Too. I get what he's saying. I thought he meant 2008 If, if you had asked him in 2008. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yep. I have never seen, and I think we might have talked about this. I've never seen any of the Born movies, so I really need to check those out. I'm sure I would you like do. those. You do. Those are sure good. I would like those. Um, all right, Erica, my lovely wife, writes in, Sweeney Todd, that was one I had on my honorable mentions. I saw it once, enjoyed it. Saw four, Dead Silence, which I don't know what that is. Uh, Disturbia, which is a video was good. game, isn't it? It might be. I don't know. Disturbia, I remember seeing. I enjoyed that. Paranormal Activity slash Hot Fuzz is her tie. She says, Paranormal Activity premiered in 07, but was wide released in 09. Tell my butthead brother I'm keeping it there. So he, Whoa, she will be happy to know that, you approve. a little harsh. I mean, would you expect there's no need less? for violence on this. Yeah, I, sure. I agreed that it, it could stay. There was no need for the the put down there. That's, that's um, your sister for whatever. you. Whatever. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll move on. I'll I'll forget it. Whatever. I'll be the Fair bigger enough. bigger person and move on. Um, Lynn writes in Disturbia, Saw Four, Paranormal Activity, and Sweeney Todd. I have never seen Sweeney Todd. Um, I don't really it's, care to see. Sweeney yeah, Todd. I mean, I'm not. I don't like musicals. That in general, there's a couple I like, but not many. And it was fine. I think The Office does a great job in that episode where Andy is in Sweeney Todd as a musical. Uh, I think that's and, all like, I need to see. Yeah, you you pretty much got the the gist of it. You got the the big cuts of it. Um, Zach writes in. I just looked up 2007 movie releases, and it was a good year. He had knocked up Walk Hard, Dewey Cox. I've never seen that yet. Reno 911, Miami, Superbad, Planet Terror, and Death Proof. Haven't seen those either. Where where do you stand on Knocked nope. Up? Did you see Knocked Up? I saw it once. It was yeah, okay. I don't know. Um, I remember thinking being really excited when I went to see it because it I was coming from the guys who did Superbad. And I'm like, yeah, this is fine. But I, I've only seen mm-hmm. it once. So, yeah. Yeah, all I all I remember from that was they all farted on each other's pillows and got pink eye. Pink eye. Which... They all talked like at one point in the movie they talked about doing it and then they like or one of them talked about how he's going to fart on somebody's pillow yeah. and then they end up all farting on each other's pillows and gave each other pink eye. As, um, as that's someone the only who has thing gotten I really remember from that. Pink eye recently. That might be a little uh little PTSD if I were to watch it again, let me tell you. Sorry, Not Justin. Pleasant. No, that's all right. I'll live. Um, cat writes in hairspray. I've never seen that. No, Juno I... death at a funeral. I don't remember death that at a one. funeral. That was a remake. Um, I saw that. That would be another honorable mention. I remember I saw it once, but I remember thoroughly enjoying it. It's a really star studded cast from what I remember. So, okay. Uh, Alex Pat on Twitter wrote in, he said, super bad is such a top tier flick for 2007. I think we can all agree there for sure. Yep. Oh, uh, let's see here. Go ahead. Do- uh, Dr. Mantis writes in number five, Juno, number four, Bor- Born Ultimatum, number three, American Gangster, number two, Knocked Up, and number one, Super Bad. American Gangster is a good film. I always think about that scene where he's they're cleaning the carpet and he's telling them to blot it. Uh, I think there's like blood in the carpet or something. He's like, you got to use club soda and blot that. That's like alpaca or some, some sort of fancy carpet. Um, that was is a good movie. Uh, Denzel Washington, right? Mm-hmm. American gangster. I have never seen that either. Yep. Denzel um, Ru- Washington and Russell Crowe. Okay. Okay. Uh, I believe this is Chris in the chat who we just talked about his list. Uh, he said, definitely gain an appreciation for knocked up now as a parent. Okay. So maybe that might be one I need yep. to revisit then for sure. Cause it's like I said, I have not seen that since I was in college. So definitely way different mindset, uh, than what I have now for sure. Yep. Uh, definitely. All right. Uh, let's see. Who do we got next? Uh, Jay bird writes in, there will be blood. I uh, like we talked about. I have never seen that either. Uh, along with number four, no country for old men. Uh, three shooter shooter. I saw, I really liked that with Mark Wahlberg. I know it became a TV show yeah. as well. I did not watch the TV show. That'd be TV an show. Movie. Wasn't that good. Okay. American gangster. Number two and number one, three ten to Yuma. Have not seen that either. All right. Okay. Um, I one. haven't seen three ten to Yuma. There will be blood. I feel like is a little overrated. The, okay. The best part is the ending. Um, I won't spoil it for you if you ever watch it, but it was, he was good. I just think it was a little overrated. Um, but whatever. Um, I digress. Uh, Pretzel <laughs> Vince writes in super bad. Uh, number five, number four, Rush Hour three. Uh, number three, National Treasure, Book of Secrets. Those are great movies. Mm-hmm. Number two, No Country for Old Men, and number one, Three Ten to Yuma. He had some honorable mentions. Fourteen oh eight. I don't remember oh, that. Oh, I hated that movie. I another scary movie that I actually watched. It was John Cusack checking into room fourteen oh eight. And all these creepy, oh, horrible, awful things Oh, that's what that was. Happening. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Um, yeah, it was okay. That was a good movie. Um, okay. 30 Days of Night. Uh, that was another zombie movie, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then there was 30. Oh, I'm thinking of um, 28 Days Later. Yes. 30 Days of Night. Was was, was, it, was it vampires or zombies or something? Something like that. Okay. Um, oh, that's right. I think it was in Alaska. Yes, where, I remember seeing commercials like, for it, that. It's when uh, you're in the they're in the winter solstice, and yeah, there's yeah. yep. Um, Disturbia, Ghost Rider, uh, Ghost Rider. That's the 
Isn't that the uh, Nicolas Cage film? Yes. Yes, it is. I'm surprised he had that on there. That's surprising. I don't remember okay. seeing that movie. And American Gangster has an honorable mention. So Nice. Okay. Good list. We've done it. We've made it through another episode, Vinny. Whew, somehow. That was, a, that was a long one. All right. Well, uh, real quick, if you'd like to write in and tell us your favorite 2007 movie or why our lists are wrong, you can do so by leaving a comment at youtube.com slash baseball whatever. Tweet us at baseball and what, or leave us a message on Instagram at baseball and whatever. You can also follow us on TikTok, even though I'll be honest, we have no, well, I, I can't speak for Vinny. I have no clue what I'm doing on TikTok at baseball and whatever there. You can find us on all your podcast apps of choice, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google, Spreaker, Anchor, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and I don't know, Overcast, Podcast Addict. There's there's so many. Uh, if you listen on Apple or Spotify, please, please, please go leave us a five-star review. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that. And mm-hmm. as always, you can text us or leave us a voicemail at 1-913-808-3278. That number again is 1-913-808-FART. I think uh, I think we saved it, Vinny. I was a little worried. I, I started off real rough at the beginning of this episode making a lot of mistakes. I feel like we turned a corner, though, about halfway, so... Uh, we did something. We, we made did something. It. We there is documentation. <laughs> we that lived we through did it. like Kramer did on his AIDS walk. <laughs> but did you wear the ribbon? Uh, we yeah. We uh we made it through. There is documentation. There is an episode eighty six. All right, we will be back. Um, Vinny's got some really cool stuff cooking up. Maybe for February or March. I can't remember what month he said. So stay tuned for that. If you're into minor league baseball, uh, you might want to check that out in the near future. Um. And we'll see what else we can cook up next week. And uh, that's it. So have a great weekend. We will be back next week with more baseball and whatever. See you guys later. See you.